الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Surely all praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator, the sustainer and the controller of all that happens in the universe and we invoke his peace and blessings upon his noble messenger his family, his companions and all those who follow them in righteousness until the end of time. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Seems like the cold weather is back, but inshallah it will get better. Uh, recently, I was asked a question. And that is, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to avoid things that are bad, why did he create them in the first place? Would it not have been better for him not to create these things so that there was no chance of anyone getting involved with these things? So uh, this person wanted to know why would God Almighty create something that is harmful and then still oblige us to avoid it. <clears throat> well, what we have to understand is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in creating human beings decided that instead of programming human beings to serve Him, He would give them the ability to choose so that they should choose to serve Him. Or of course choose not to do so. Because all creations were created to serve the Creator in their own ways, of course. The purpose, the primary purpose of the existence of everything is to acknowledge God Almighty. And each creation has its own way of doing that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that there is nothing in creation except that it glorifies the praises of your Lord. And Allah says, وَلَكِنْ لَا تَفْقَهُونَ تَسْبِيحَهُمْ But you do not understand the manner in which they do this. They do it, but we don't understand them. <clears throat> so the purpose, the primary purpose of the existence of everything, not just humans, but every other creation that Allah created, animate or inanimate, is to recognize and acknowledge the Creator. The thing is though, most of these creations were programmed by Allah to serve Him. So they basically have no choice. But with human beings, and of course we know jinn, these are the two creations we know of. There might be others we don't know about. But humans and jinns were given intelligence by Allah because Allah wants us to what? to choose to serve Him rather than being programmed to serve Him. And so as a result, Allah gave humans a high level of intelligence. A high level, not just intelligence, because animals have intelligence. But not the high level that humans have. So although some animals might be smart, and they might be able to problem solve a little bit, they're not able to do that at the level that a human being can do it. And this high level of intelligence is necessary to ensure the proper use or exercise of the freedom of choice. That's why a child who is not mature, someone who is not mature, is not held accountable by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, even in, 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 in the legal system, a child is not considered legally responsible. Why? Because the, the brain or the intelligence of that child has not developed and nurtured to the point where the child is capable of making good choices. There are people who have mental health issues. They might be grown-ups, they might be adults. 
but they have mental health issues. And so, in, in as much as physically they're, you know, adults, on the intellectual or mental level, they may not have the capacity to make judgments and choices of the adult. And this is why Allah tells us that He will not hold them accountable. He will not hold them accountable because the mental capacity is not there. It's our experience in life that in order to go to university, you start sending your children from a very young age to school. You start off with JK, right? Junior kindergarten. And then they slowly walk their way up through the system. And little by little, as they grow physically, and they learn as well, the brain is maturing. Their intelligence is developing. So that at a certain point in time, they're capable of handling the work in university. Now if you were to take a child who is in grade 4 or 5, and say, look, we'll send you to university, what would happen? The child will not be able to handle the work because the, the, the mental capacity of the child has not been nurtured and developed to that point. So the high level of intelligence that we have is necessary to ensure that we're capable of exercising this freedom of choice. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to serve Him by choosing to do so. But we do so on the, on the basis that, of the, on the basis of submission and surrender to Allah. In other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to choose to serve Him by choosing to do the things He has ordered us to do and to avoid the things that He has ordered us to avoid. How would you know if someone will truly make good choices unless you give the person a full range of possibilities to choose from, good and bad? Because if you give the person only good choices to choose from, then you will never know if the person had a chance to choose from bad things as well, if they would have chosen to do anything bad. You wouldn't know that. Because if you give them only uh, good options, every choice they make, it will be good. So you will never be able to tell whether this person, it may seem that this person is making good choices. But remember, the person really has no option. We would not have had, you know, full freedom of choice. It would be limited. Because our choices are limited to only that which is good. So to truly test us, to see whether we would truly make the right choices, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the full range of possibilities, good and bad. Now, a person can truly prove whether he or she will make good choices. Because the, the, the possibility of two, making bad choices exists now, it's there. You can also choose to do bad things, it's there. But in, in spite of that, if a person still chooses to do that which is good only, then truly you have proven, the person has proven that look, I have submitted and I have made only good choices, even though I had the opportunity to make bad choices. See, this is how the person is truly tested. This is how submission can truly be tested. By giving the person the full range of, 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 of possibilities. If the person submits, then the person will make the good choice and will avoid the bad choice. But if you give someone only good choices, it doesn't mean that they are actually capable of making only good choices. And so this is why, brothers and sisters, Allah the Exalted, in His infinite knowledge and wisdom, did not just create good things. Because if He had, 
then we would never be able to really put our intelligence that we have to its fullest use. Everything would be limited to only that which is good. But Allah the Exalted created this intellect that is indeed a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing, the human intellect. And what's amazing is this sort of seemingly end, endless capability of the human intellect to learn and to discover new things. Like the curiosity of human beings, it seems like it's, it's endless. And so what is not uh, discovered today in the future might be discovered. In fact, if you look at our trend uh, over uh, you know, the centuries, we will see that. That the, the human mind is such that it is always curious. And this is how Allah created us. See, this is how we learn, how we increase our knowledge. We're curious. So we start trying to find out about it. And if we look back a couple of centuries and look at the tra human track record, we'll see that. That there was a time when certain things were never heard of. I remember, and I'm sure you know most of you or, or some of you at least remember, the time when cell phone did not exist in our vocabulary. Do you brothers remember that that time? When the cell phone was, did, was not in existence period. And when force came out, it used to be like a huge gadget you held in your hand. And look where, is it, where it's at today. Do you remember the time when USBs were, not, were never heard of? You had these floppy disks, right? That you would store your information on the computer. I remember when I first came to this country, this country in, the, in the early 90s, 1992, and I started preparing work for classes and so on on the computer, I had these floppy disks that I was saving them on. And then eventually I had a friend after a few years, he said to me, you know, you should also back up these things on a, on a, a CD. And then eventually now we'll have the USB. One little thing. Right? The USB, one little equipment, but can store tons of data. Or data, depending on how you say the word. So subhanAllah, this is the, this is the, the beauty of the intellect that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created for human beings. And He wants us to use that to make good choices. But in order to test us to see whether we have or we would use this intellect to truly make good choices, He also created bad things. And now we are to exercise our freedom of choice, give, using our intelligence, this wonderful intelligence. And now we are to make our choices. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course, He knows the choices we will make. So He's not looking to find out anything. But it is for you and I to show or to, to prove to ourselves whether we have submitted to Allah or not. So when a person is faced with good and bad choices, and that person chooses, in as much as the person may have, uh, you know, desires and may have temptations and so on, if that person chooses to resist these desires and temptations and choose to do what is good, this is the demonstration of submission and surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Without the temptations, you could not truly prove that you submit. And that is why when Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu once was asked, who is the better person? The person who does not know what sinning is, all the person knows is doing good things. And the person who knows what sinning is, yet chooses to do that which is good. Which of the two is better? And his answer was, the one who knows what sinning is, what kufr is, what disbelief is, because that person has to now control the urges and the temptations to engage and indulge in some of these things. 
<coughs> while the other person doesn't know about that. All they know is they're doing this all their life. In addition to that, the person who, and I'm not saying you know we should uh, do wrong things just to experience it, but the person who has no idea of what uh, non-Islam is, what, what disbelief is, who has no idea of what wrong is, that person may not even truly appreciate the Islam that he or she has. To truly appreciate it, you have to know what the opposite is. And that's why it's important for us brothers and sisters, not only to read the Qur'an and the Hadith and study the Qur'an and the Hadith, but we should also learn about what's happening in the world around us. You know, read the news. Read what's, what's happening in terms of discoveries, scientific discoveries. Knowing what's happening in the world around us. So that, our, so that with this knowledge, we can begin to appreciate the, the beauty of Islam as a way of life. We should, we should ask questions and think about things. You know, why did Allah completely prohibit alcohol? He tells us that there are benefits in it for mankind. So why would He still prohibit it completely? Seek, to, seek the answers to such questions. And inshallah, when you get the answer, you will begin to appreciate what Allah has legislated. You will begin to truly appreciate what Allah the Creator has legislated, what He has prohibited and what He has ordered us to do. In fact, you will see the wisdom, the divine wisdom in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us. And then we will appreciate the value of Islam as a way of life. We have to learn. Remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran has urged us and exhorted us to also study the world around us, to study science. Because all these things would point us to God Almighty. Because He created all these things. So even in the natural world, there are signs that would point us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So even if you are scientifically inclined, mashallah, there are enough signs there to point you in the right direction. Whatever your inclination is, in the Qur'an, there is something for you to point you in the right direction. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. May He open up our hearts and minds so that we can understand this wonderful message He has revealed from mankind. And may He inspire us all to live by this message. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our hearts and minds so that we can come to understand and appreciate the value and the beauty of the way of life that He has prescribed for us. And may He keep us firm on that and may He forgive for us our mistakes and shortcomings. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ وَبَرَكَاتُ